Synthetic versus Organic Agriculture. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with thy diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Leviticus 19, 19. Genetically modified organisms are unnatural products whose genes have been mingled with those of another creature, using viruses or fecal bacteria to violate genetic barriers for the sake of attempting and failing to improve upon God's design. Genetically modified foods are scientifically proven to harm creatures in as little as 90 days, primarily causing liver and kidney damage with longer exposure leading to severe digestive and reproductive problems, including sterility and cancer. The technology itself and the chemicals it depends upon, synthetic pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, fertilizers, and much more, including products linked to the collapse of global bee populations, threaten the ecology of the earth more than any army that does now or has ever existed. Versions of GM technology with Terminator seed technology can crossbreed with natural heirloom plants and render them sterile. And through epigenesis, Terminator seed tech is only one small part of the danger these products pose to all mortal life. Why do so many nations ban GMOs, including Japan, Ireland, and Switzerland, while in the U.S., we have laws that protect GMO corporations from lawsuit even when their products are proven extremely unsafe and in active danger to our environment and ecology. Why did the same U.S. president who promised to label GMOs sign that same, quote, Monsanto Protection Act, which legally shields chemical and biotech corporations from the harm they cause? and further entangles government and therefore the people and our resources into these harmful products. How long has this modern version of the Gadianton robbers filled the judgment seats? Isaiah saw our day and modern Israel's lukewarm apathy and latter-day disobedience toward, quote, the law and the prophets. How ancient Israel described what today we call the Old Testament. Using the Lord's mortal ministry as an excuse to ignore and completely disregard the majority of the Old Testament, especially concerning societal, cultural, civic, and governmental laws given by God concerning all those who consider themselves part of the tribes of Israel. These are reinforced by the Lord specifying that these commandments, statutes, laws, etc. are to be kept eternally, forever, throughout your generations, etc. Things such as not committing the sin of domestic usury, known today as monetary interest. The Lord specifically let it be known which parts of Old Testament law were altered by his mortal ministry, and most of those parts pertained to sacrifice and sin, while the majority remains to be obeyed. Those who consider themselves to be part of the tribes of Israel, covenant to obey the laws of God, and not go the way of the world when the world contradicts those laws to be a peculiar and holy people who are set apart in righteousness. The adversary has long encouraged people to ignore many eternal laws and commandments within the Old Testament, through the misconception that those things passed away as a result of Christ's coming, even though the Lord himself taught in the New Testament, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. The Lord goes on teaching that in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven, the tribes of Israel must not only keep Old Testament law, but keep and exceed it as exemplified by the Lord's mortal life. One of the most important examples he set is the Lord's own obedience to all righteous Old Testament law. 
indeed, not only in keeping, but magnificently exceeding that standard. How many today can say they meet the standards of even mediocre ancient Hebrews in keeping unclean things from entering into the tabernacle of their body, or of righteous stewardship of the earth? The Lord emphasized in his mortal ministry that if we could not keep those eternal statutes, which are the minimum standard, he will not allow us to enter the kingdom of heaven. Many Old Testament commandments remain, including that our bodies are temples and that we should be clean tabernacles for the Spirit of the Lord to dwell within. We cannot be fully clean when we pollute and destroy the tabernacles of our bodies and the earth by sowing and consuming filth in opposition to the commandments of God and contrary to His design. The physical cleanliness, health, and sanctity of our tabernacles is violated and degraded when we allow these corrupt things to enter them. Food or drink containing genetically modified products, such as aspartame, have made our people drunk and not with wine, and driven us with subtle yet powerful chains of addiction. Aspartame is genetically modified bacterial feces used as a sweetener in much modern food and drink. More addictive and harmful to the body than MSG, both of which are brain-damaging substances classified as excitotoxins. This pervasive substance is linked to severe damage of the digestive system and many other health problems, including serious neurological ones, symptoms of which can result in impaired judgment. Beyond the physical, what would it look like if we could see the spiritual result to ourselves of consuming this filth? This genetically modified drug was approved by the corrupt FDA and brought to you by Monsanto Incorporated. Only one horrifying example of what is happening to the people, the food, and every creature large and small and the environment of our generation. In the Old Testament, Isaiah spoke of our day when in chapter 28 he says, For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place left clean. Verse 8. Now is the time to turn away from these unwholesome things and restore the sanctity of our bodies and return to righteous stewardship of the earth. How do we know God isn't commanding us to monocrop when he commands us to not sow our fields with mingled seed? Judge the works. Monocropping equals pestilence, disease, and famine. Biodiversity equals healthy abundance. The Lord was warning ancient Israelites against hybridization in terms they could understand. If they and others had listened and not mingled their seed, hybridizing it for industrial purposes for more and more profit, yield over nutrition, rather than obeying God, then we would not have the gluten disorders we have today from industrially hybridized wheat crops. The gluten content of ancient grains and people's reaction to them is different from our modern industrial grains because with modern grains we have disobeyed the agricultural statutes of God, and many now suffer as a result. In our day, we take that disobedience to the next step through genetic hybridization and other modification putting the genes of one creature into another, violating both creatures and God's law. It is profound rape and destruction concealed as philanthropy. Myth. We need GMOs to fight global famine, pests, disease, and meet food demand. Fact. We already produce more food than the entire population of the earth can eat. The problem is poverty instead of the false propagandized idea of scarcity. The earth is abundant enough for every creature within it. Organic crop yields continue to break world records that GMOs can't match, while God sends increased pestilence and disease to the supposedly more pest and disease resistant GM crops. Those who war against God's order fail. 
GM crops also have substantially less nutrients than traditional organic food. When planted in beneficial holistic guilds with a healthy environment, natural crops fight off each other's predators and diseases, and if needed, natural pest control exists already within God's design in ways such as partnering with ladybugs, praying mantids, and more. Natural solutions prove more effective and beneficial for crops than synthetic treatments, such as organic mixtures of natural neem and other essential oils emulsified into castile soaps, which safely and effectively combat most stubborn pests and diseases without harming crops, the environment, or beneficial insect and animal life. The world's food problem is not about lack of abundance. It's about fundamentally misunderstanding God's natural order and the costly price of safe, organic food that has become so expensive due to the corrupt chemical and biotech corporations who are only in the agricultural business as deceitful wolves, attempting to supplant the natural food supply with one they control, patent, and abuse for power and profit. They are the ones who have been driving up prices, shrugging off their own regulations while lobbying to regulate organic food, and using their vast resources to attack farmers who want no part of their ungodly practices. Now, thanks to massive and enduring biotech and corrupt chemical corporation lobbying, and the revolving door between corrupt corporations and unconstitutional big government, these extremely dangerous GMOs are subsidized by taxpayer dollars, while organic farmers are heavily regulated and organic crops are made almost prohibitively expensive by design. Why is unconstitutional unlimited big government complicit with this, beyond the base motivation of greed? As many influential people have noted throughout history, control the food and you control the people. There are biotech and chemical corporations so corrupt that they knowingly contribute to the global massacre of bees while simultaneously engineering new bees intended to survive the new poison environment. This stratagem would give them complete control of the crops from seed to propagation to fertilization to seed royalties, fees, and other synthetic crop maintenance costs while causing public dependency on their synthetic and centralized food system. The Gadianton robbers have truly evolved in modern day. The corporate GMO strategy has plainly presented itself to be make it synthetic, make it proprietary, and control or destroy all competition, be it governmental, corporate, private, big, small, or the earth itself and all creatures within it. These are merchants of death and destruction for temporal power and profit, who peddle famine as abundance while still being completely unable to achieve what organic farming does. What follows is that once health is compromised on a national scale, from the people trusting in big government and corrupt corporations over God and or his design, then comes national, unconstitutional, centralized, big government healthcare, courtesy of the same big government and many of the same biotech and chemical corporations who are intermarried with one another in the current revolving door between unconstitutional big government and corrupt corporations. The chemical, biotech, and big government revolving door personnel equates to a long-term conflict of interest which has greatly endangered the health and safety of the people. This collusion must be broken by social, commercial, and political activism, and by the people refusing to aid the perpetrators of these crimes against all life. Isaiah in chapter 28 speaks to the secret combinations infecting the world when saying, Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. 
When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth it shall take you, for morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night. And it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. Vexation comes to even the righteous in understanding the report of our day, where the earth and the people are systematically destroyed. Many are turned aside and stumble in judgment due to drinks made strong and harmful through drugs, such as aspartame, and corrupted food which degrades mind, body, and spirit. Here are only five reasons why GMOs are a recipe for global famine. 1. Patented seed. 2. Soil infertility. 3. Monocropping and loss of diversity. 4. Terminator seed technology. 5. Dependency on a centralized food system. What would Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Joseph Smith, or Ezra Taft Benson do in your position. In the Book of Mormon, secret combinations brought the downfall of great civilizations who inhabited this land before us, including the Nephites. The Book of Mormon is a testament and an instructor against the dangers of secret combinations, a warning from the dust calling us in these latter days to trust in the arm of God over the flawed arm and prideful mind of mankind, to not cooperate with their destruction of the order of God, and to cleanse their corruption however justly possible. Choosing organic over synthetic agriculture and products will help accomplish righteous goals and will greatly benefit your health, your loved ones, and the entire earth. Participate in righteous activism by voting against the corruption within our agricultural system. Work to reverse the situation so that organic farmers and products are benefited and costs alleviated while GMOs labor under extensive regulations, labeling, and taxes as the people were promised would be done, or banned outright as the chemical and biological warfare against all life that they are. One thing the White House and the largest GMO company, Monsanto, have in common is that they both serve organic food to their own people while pushing this poison onto the public for power, profit, and eugenic population control. The thousands of deceitful, short-term biotech and chemical company financed studies which say GM products are safe do not stand to the many independent studies which prove otherwise and the irrefutable and dire personal, environmental, and ecological dangers that now face us as a result of these unwholesome practices and products. Please pray about this and choose correct action over lukewarm worldliness pursuant to self-destruction. Thank you for your consideration. All sources are linked at the bottom of this video's about section. We leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.